Sadly, there seems to be no limit when it comes to possible manipulative behavior by narcissists. In this video, I will focus on a specific kind of manipulative behavior called gaslighting and my aim is to get you to gain knowledge and learn how to better recognize this behavior. It's essential to recognize this manipulation because if you're unknowingly exposed to this, it will drain your energy and you will slowly disconnect from yourself. Gaslighting is one of the finest art forms of manipulation of some narcissists. It's mental abuse and very disturbing and brutal behavior. My experience of growing up with an intelligent narcissistic father and an empath mother resulted in learning how to recognize patterns in both their behavior and their relationship dynamics, including the subtle but ongoing gaslighting. A few questions to ask yourself that might show if this video can be useful to you are Do I keep questioning my thoughts and perception of reality? Do I feel like I'm slowly going crazy or becoming more confused? Or am I apologizing a lot or do I feel like I'm not enough more often? If you recognize such things, your narcissistic partner or possibly parent might be gaslighting you. So, what is gaslighting exactly? Gaslighting is ongoing manipulation and brainwashing to cause you, the victim, to have more and more self-doubt and eventually lose your own sense of perception, identity and self-worth. What's so difficult is that it happens very slowly and is done in a way that makes it very hard to realize it's happening when you're in it. It's just very abusive behavior. The term gaslighting has its origin from an old play called Gaslight, where a husband dims the lights in their home and keeps denying that the lights changed to his wife. He did all of this in order to drive her crazy. And this is exactly how it works, as the wife will start to question whether it's her eyes going bad or if it's perhaps in her mind. She's not considering the possibility that he might be lying and thus gets convinced She's going insane slowly. It's just very mental. Now, causing doubt in someone else can be done unconsciously in a milder form when, for example, someone is defending themselves when feeling blamed. The difference between this and gaslighting is that the gaslighting really is ongoing abusive manipulation in order to hurt or control others. A narcissist that uses this manipulation will not apologize for what happened or think it's wrong. Some basic examples of what a gaslighter repeatedly could say are You are just crazy, that never happened. Are you sure about that? Your memory isn't always that great. It's all in your head. You are making things up randomly. Now I will go further into some examples later. First. Let's explore why anyone can become a victim of gaslighting. A narcissist that uses this manipulation could be very charming or seem like a nice person. You would have no reason to suspect this person would be playing brutal games of manipulation. Therefore, when the process of gaslighting begins, it will feel quite bad to second guess this person, and you might feel a bit guilty about this. These feelings will be abused by the narcissist and you might become slowly more disconnected from your intuition. We all have doubts and uncertainties, which is a healthy thing. It's a human characteristic to search for an answer within yourself. If someone tells you something with a great amount of certainty, you would probably believe it based on basic human trust and question yourself first before you start to question the other. Now, this is because most human beings wouldn't suspect someone is trying to manipulate them in this way. This simple characteristic of basic trust 
and believing in good intentions is thus abused by someone that is gaslighting another person. Therefore, anyone could become a victim and it's thus important to recognize this behavior to protect ourselves. But also, we don't want to lose our basic trust either, as this is a beautiful thing as well. So, it can be quite hard to explain how gaslighting exactly works. So I will try to illustrate it with some examples of the behavior of a person gaslighting. There are many gaslighting techniques that a narcissist can use and there is a lot of variety in which behavior there could be and also to what extent it might happen. It comes down to how repeatedly this sort of behavior occurs and if you recognize how this behavior affects you. The first example is lying with certainty and really sticking with it. Obviously, when dealing with narcissists, there will be a lot of lying involved. It can be quite amazing to what extent they can lie. The lies can be very convincing. It seems like they believe their own lies and fake persona. If you like or love someone, you might have trouble to believe they are lying when they are really convinced about it. This can create self-doubt. The second example is denial and demanding proof. A narcissist can deny he or she said something without blinking. You know they said it, but they just deny saying it. They can demand that you prove it, which obviously could only come from your memory. When you're emotional and constantly manipulated, it can be hard to stick with your memory. You could start to question your memory and what happened. The consequence can be that in time you accept their reality more often than your own and thereby letting go slowly of your own memory. This can be a slow process in which you might even blame yourself for saying things or for not remembering correctly. Now, a narcissist could also use tricks to confuse you. The narcissist could hide stuff or switch its place in the house, for example your car keys. And this causes that you can't align reality with your memory. You would start to wonder how that happened and this can be very confusing. A narcissist could also simply sometimes give you the wrong information. Another example is not accepting criticism and not owning up to anything in general. A narcissist responds childishly when he or she gets feedback on their negative behavior. On the one side, a narcissist could choose to fight using, for example, denial, blame or a temper tantrum. And on the other side, the narcissist could choose to take flight and, for example, leave, avoid or use the silent treatment. The thing is, they see the relationship as a competitive game and they want to win it. This means they aren't likely to admit flaws or own up to anything, which is an important sign of dealing with a gaslighting narcissist. There can be many example phrases your abusive partner or parent might constantly use to confuse and trivialize you. Here are a few. You are trying to confuse me. You're twisting my words. Not again this argument. What's up with your memory? You were just making stuff up in your head. Who gave you this crazy thought? Was it your sister? You are too sensitive. Why can't you move on? You always read too much into things. I was joking. Why can't you take a joke? It's not always about you. And the list of examples goes on. Now, all these examples were the behavior of the other person, which is one part of learning to recognize this manipulative behavior. Now, we will look into signals or warning signs within yourself. The most clear signal is when you see yourself getting more doubts about your perception and your memory. This would mean you often feel tired 
and confused. You can find a lot of possible signs of gaslighting, of which I summarized a few. 1. You question whether your feelings are justified, if you are too sensitive, and have a tendency to dismiss your feelings. This is you disconnecting with your emotions. 2. You are second-guessing yourself and past events, which is disconnecting with your memory. 3. You are apologizing all the time and trust the judgment of others over your own. This is disconnecting with your own judgment or feelings. 4. You make excuses for your partner or withhold information from friends and family, which is disconnecting with your transparency and honesty to your support system. 5. You think something is wrong with you and question if you are a good enough partner which is a form of disconnecting with your self-esteem and self-worth. 6. You feel something might be off and you don't feel like yourself anymore. You might feel joyless, less confident and wonder why you aren't happier. This can be a message from your intuition that you might ignore. 7. You often feel confused, can't focus and can't make simple decisions which is a sign of being mentally tired. And last, you are constantly reminded of your shortcomings, flaws, undesirability, you walk on eggshells and feel insecure. This is disconnecting with your self-esteem and being yourself. Clearly, all these effects and signs are disturbing and shows the brutality of gaslighting. You could see for yourself if and how much of these signs you notice. If you are a victim of gaslighting, you might feel stuck and alone. It's because you become isolated and disconnected from your environment and yourself. No, you deserve better and that things can change. The first important thing to do is to start observing and to write things down. It's important to discover whether you are being gaslighted by documenting what happens for yourself. If something happens more often and you're fairly sure it's not possible, just write it down. It can be very simple things, but it can help you to determine that something is off about the situation and it's not because of your memory. By observing and writing it down, you can find out inconsistencies between stories and you will know for certain when someone is lying or denying something. You could also try recording conversations. Now, I think the most important thing after emotionally detaching and becoming aware of being gaslighted is shifting attention from the narcissist to attention for yourself and your energy. I will go into some tips in shifting attention to yourself again. When becoming aware of being gaslighted, it's essential to start the process in the other direction again. This means the process of trusting yourself more, feeling more positive energy, developing and being more kind to yourself. Clearly, it's hard work and there will be grieving first when you realize you are being gaslighted. I hope the following tips might be helpful to you somewhere in the process of healing. Before you can even start healing, it's essential to recognize what happened and try to forgive yourself for being in that position. Yes, it's easier said than done and you might feel a lot of shame or blame yourself. Do know that anyone can become a victim. You really can blame yourself for being the victim of a narcissist as they have no conscience and are masters of manipulation. It's great you trusted someone and you had good intentions and it's not your fault someone abused this. 2. It's essential to protect yourself from this kind of manipulation by setting boundaries for yourself. When you are the victim of a narcissist, your boundaries will have been pushed slowly, as you weren't aware of it. The one thing you have learned is to become aware of it, and you can now choose consciously to protect your boundaries. 3. A great way to make you stronger is meditating. 
and will help you with your focus and gaining clarity. It learns you to be more in the here and now and become less attached to your thoughts. Your negative thoughts and feelings were emphasized for a long time when gaslighted. Therefore, it's important to work on acknowledging your thoughts and feelings without any judgment. For it's important to reconnect with those you trust. Some narcissists aim to weaken your support system. If you have become more isolated, it can be a challenge to reconnect with family and friends. There could be a shame about the situation. If possible, talk to friends or family members that you trust. Focus on the people who show you real kindness, care and or love. Know that there are still a lot of kind people in this world. Also, it's a great step to go to a therapist or mental health professional. Reconnecting and seeking help means you think you are worth it. It's also important to have faith in the healing process. You might feel alone. People that show kindness will always appear, but the most important person to give you kindness is yourself. This would mean it's even more important to work on receiving your own love and kindness, as you have a lot of love to give. So have faith in the healing process. It might be hard and it will take time, but I hope inside you know you are enough and worth the hard work of healing. It's all about taking small steps into the right direction. I hope this video can be helpful to you and I wish you strength and more kindness in the future.